Hey everybody, Vaughn here with the Vonster vlog and in this video I wanted to show you guys what is in our big green camping tote. So this is the tote in question. Um, I don't actually know the dimensions on it, but it's pretty big. I'll get the dimensions and put them down in the video description. Um, but there's a chicken for reference. <laughs> hey girls, I don't have any treats for you right now, I'm sorry. I'm shooting a video, Nutmeg, what do you want? treats clearly um <laughs> so yeah so that's the the bin um i like it for many reasons and we'll talk about that let's go ahead and get started so i don't have any special like sound equipment or anything like that so i hope the wind isn't too loud on the audio if it is sorry <laughs> like i guess i'll have already shot the video and that's future bones problem i suppose now whenever we bring this bin camping with us we don't always bring like tables and stuff so it's really nice to have a sturdy work surface that um oftentimes whenever we get to camp i'll actually take everything out of the bin um <clears throat> and we will use it uh as like it's a good sitting height for like i'll cook on it and then we'll take our cook set up off and then i do our dishes and stuff on it i hear you girl um and it's just it's a perfect height uh and also we can sit on it for if we have if we need like a bench for by a picnic table or anything like that um it's really nice whenever we camp at places that have picnic tables she is such a ham um <laughs> but uh so that being said let's go ahead and get it open because i think that will demonstrate better than anything that i could say about how well it keeps everything contained and just we can grab it and go whenever we go camping like at the time of recording this time tomorrow we need to have the tent set up and camp like going Nutmeg, what are you even doing <laughs> Get your butt out of my face. What are you doing? Get your butt off my face. Okay, so we're going to get this open. And you can see in here, this is all of the loose stuff that it doesn't matter where we're camping. As long as we're like camping and not backpacking, we're going to need this stuff. So we have our solar shower and its hose. And as I take stuff out, I'm just going to set it over here on the table and then we'll talk about the stuff that's on the table right now is the stuff that needed restocked. So we've got more rope, trash bags, some dish soap, sprug bug spray, thank you nutmeg, um, and hot hands. Because whenever we were planning this trip, we were like, it's going to be the first week in November. It could be as low as like high 30s every night. Ooh, so chilly and cold. And the weather channel. Like, not to complain about, like, the best stuff ever, but it says it's going to be a high of, like, the mid to low 70s and a low of, like, 60, which is nicer camping than when we went back in October. So, I'm just... <laughs> so, we were gearing up getting, like, extra wool socks and thinking about, you know, how are we going to... If it's very cold, like, what kind of strategies can we have to implement, you know, so we got, like, hot water bottles and Nalgene's and, like, we have, like, a... And it turns out, hopefully, we won't even need any of that. But if we do, we have it in place. So this is like a three gallon, I believe, uh, water, collapsible water jug that also hangs. But I don't like to hang it just because I don't want to put the stress on the bottle if I don't have to. But it's perfect for if there's a water source there at the campground. Uh, we just fill it up, uh, typically once a day. And then that is the water that we use for boiling and cooking. That is the water that we use for washing and rinsing dishes. Um, we also have this solar shower for, uh, I used it in the past just as an extra water receptacle, but it's a really nice um, whenever we do have a spot of full sun uh, or if it's in like the summer or something, we'll get a couple of these for like five bucks on like the Amazon. Uh, and you fill them up with water and you lay them in the sun and it actually makes some really pleasantly warm water for like bathing your body or like washing your dishes and stuff. Now the campground that we are camping at does have like shower facilities, but just in case, if we go and it's like the off season, like I don't like to take any chances if it's going to a campground that we have not been to before, which is most campgrounds, because um, we don't like to hit the same terrain twice if we can help it. Now you can see also in here, we have some loose stuff just packed in on top. And this is the same gear you guys that we've been using for like, since 2008. Oh, there's a train, isn't that nice? <laughs> so just 
bear with me. <laughs> we have lanterns. They're not particularly bright, but they do the job. We function mostly when we're like cooking and cleaning and stuff if it's dark at the campground with headlamps on, which I do not keep in here. I keep them in our day pack like backpacks um, just in case we're ever out day hiking and get like sideways or leeway or I don't know there's a word for it we get sidetracked and don't make it back before the sunset it's always nice to have a headlamp and just a couple of like emergency things with us just in case you know so those are the two lanterns that we use this one takes like three or four hashtag urban homestead y'all it's been quiet all day <laughs> hasn't it hasn't it ginger you're a good girl ow she bit me <laughs> so we're just gonna future bond would have the good sense to edit this out but i kind of want you guys to feel my pain <laughs> this one uses like three or four double a batteries this one uses like three or four d batteries which i actually use as backup for our uh, in a separate video, we'll go over our sleep system uh, for whenever we're car camping. Uh, which is, we don't sleep in our car, we just carry everything in our car. Is that car camping? I don't know. It's not backpacking, that's darn tootin'. So, um, but we use it as backup batteries for... I'm just gonna wait. I'm just gonna wait. Um, so this guy is an LED and he's very bright, but like very harsh bright lighting, but he uses like three or four, uh, what is that? Triple or double A? Let's open it up and see. Three double A batteries. So we do bring extra batteries and stuff with us, but we'll show you that here in a sec as well. Um, very, very bright, very lightweight, which is really nice, but this thing gets heavy fast. Um, this guy uses, it's, he's kind of hard to get into because um, he's weather ready, which is nice for if we forget and leave them uncovered on uh, the picnic table, if there's a picnic table available. But it's three different, four different, yeah, three different light settings and a little hangy hook. But I really like this one because the batteries that are in it are D batteries. And while it does provide light, it also gives us a place to be able to store extra batteries for the air pump for our mattress. So that we'll go into a, our sleep system in a separate video. But um, yeah, we use a, a little battery powered pump to pump up our air mattress. And it's always nice to have a couple of extra just in case, because it's really vital. So I like to have like a plan B and a plan C for if the batteries in there don't work. Um, so yeah, light is always super important um tidiness is super important every time we close down our tent like we're packing up um like we, we've been known to stay a little bit late in the day if we have to just to make sure that the tent's completely dried out like we'll drink things and dry it out in the sun and i always go through and sweep uh the floor of the tent because it's very important to me that next time we open it back up there's not stuff in there that might have mildewed or so that's just i mean it probably seems excessive but the silly little ones that come in like the camping section can't do anything with that so i like to use these guys and a full-size broom is just too much like i'm not even gonna so next we're gonna pull out we have a little bit of our dish system so we have, let's see, this is our biodegradable soap, which is nice. I, it's very important to me that I have something that if I'm cleaning up, like, we made bacon, I really need to get my skillet clean. I like having something that can cut through that grease. Um, got a green scrubby, a green scrubby sponge, and a wire uh, scrubber. Typically, for my own purposes, I only ever use this, but whenever we go camping with friends that have cast iron, these come in really handy, and it's always nice. You can't have friends help you do dishes if you only have one sponge, so I like to put everybody to work. But um, again, if you put in scalding hot water and it's super greasy and gross, I do like to have uh, just a little bit of a barrier between me and the rest of the world whenever I'm up to my elbows and washing dishes. Now here... We have everything kind of nests together a little bit. Let me set these off to the side. Inside this old skillet, which I wish I could find another, oh, it's not a skillet, it's a pot. Another pot like this. 
this pot has actually a strainer lid that's somewhere else in the bin, but I like it for just boiling water for noodles. Like we eat mac and cheese at least once a trip, and I also like having another uh, pot for boiling water because we usually have, but I just put our bowls in it, and we do bring enough dishes to feed a gathering of four people. So sometimes we make friends at the campground or uh, it's it's nice to have extra and they come in like sets of four anyways you guys so it just seems to make sense this is a bag full of bungees these are extra tent steaks and I guess I stole my friend's green scubby I'm so sorry Pam um, but an extra green scubby which again I, there's a fine balance between trying to only bring what I need and trying to have enough for in case of like, you know what I mean? Like, I don't want to bring too much all of the time, but I also don't want to be, you know, stuck being the only one washing dishes because I only brought one sponge. Like, and that one's big enough. I could cut it in half, but still. Um, so this is the kettle that I like to put in the coals of the fire to get water boiled quick. Um, and it is just one of those old enameled kettles with a lid. Um, and I use it primarily just for boiling water for doing dishes, though. I, I still drink tea water and stuff out of it. And then a little thing of vanilla extract that's not supposed to be floating around loose. But now we have our two, like, Rubbermaid, uh, dish pans. And I have a system with these, they're so old and gross. Like, it's just fire stained from, like, soot and stuff. But I'll wash in one and rinse in the other. And then whenever the rinse water gets gross, um, like gets too soapy, I'll scooch that over, put fresh hot water in it, dump this one out, put fresh warm water in it, and then, or cool, if we can, you know, I try to, hot sudsy water keeps dysentery at bay <laughs> in one of its many forms, um, and just try to keep everything just as tidy as you can without burning water, um, and again, that's for if we have a water spigot and stuff. Uh, there at the campground. Whenever we backpack, I try to eat just out of like pouches or Ziploc bags um, if I can help it to keep the dishes clean or I'll put water in the dish straight up with my spoon and then drink it and then do a little bit of a wash with like uh, the biodegradable soap and stuff but uh, some stuff just doesn't taste very good and it's watered down doing the dishes for him but again that's our backpacking, backpacking etiquette more than anything. I do like to bring extra fuel so here's, and I'll kind of, whenever we pack this back in, I'll angle it down so y'all can see. These are our fairy lights because I'm bougie and basic. So uh, they were like, I don't know, links to everything down in the video description. Um, but they're great for like along the edge of a tarp. It's just kind of nice. I actually really like putting them along if there's like a line. Like, if whenever we're putting our tarp up, we have to have a tie out line that's kind of in the way. I'll put the fairy lights on it and that'll help at night. We still trip on it, but... <laughs> Mallet for hammering in tent spikes. We could just use our hatchet back, but I prefer if I miss with the mallet, I'm not cutting through the side of my tent the way that I might be with our hatchet. So, I also, we use the end to pull the tent stakes out and that's very handy. <clears throat> Tongs for moving logs in the fire is the biggest thing. This is like our fire poker. Um, we don't use that one for food. We've brought this with us. It was like gifted to us one year when we were like young people just starting out in like a barbecue set. And we were like, yeah, we might use it. And I've never used it. But I'm still going to keep it in my year. So I'm a little guilty. I could I could do a pack check down and get rid of some stuff. But I'm not there yet. Like... <laughs> cold packs for when I get boo-boos because I often get boo-boos like uh, this last time Randy and I went camping we both laid in the hammock and the hammock held up the carabiner held up the tree strap did not hold up the daisy chain ripped out and it got Randy right on the shoulder with the carabiner popped them and so it was really nice having some cold packs you just squeeze them and they're like icy icy cold for like 30 minutes it's really nice I also use them to ice my e knees and ankles uh, if we've had a particularly heavy hiking day <clears throat> basic med kit like mostly very superficial stuff if anything happens to a seriousness beyond what some band-aids can fix we're not going to be camping anymore we can get in our car and go to a hospital or something like I don't need to have this stuff to do a tourniquet so I don't even know how to do a tourniquet I'd like to take the field training and stuff to learn how to do that but until I learn how to do it 
I'll probably just end up like choking somebody. So it was just Neosporin and Band-Aids, like very, very basic. Um, there's that lid we talked about. We have some paper plates. It's one of my favorite things to do whenever we have bacon and uh, we want to save the bacon grease is I'll put it on a paper plate and then put that into a baggie and then we'll use that as a fire starter the next day. Um, and then of course the plates, but this is the lid with the little strainer holes that like locks onto that black uh, saucepan. Um, and they just all kind of like stack together like this. I try to take up as little things as possible. We have our collapsing dish drain which looks pretty scuzzy but it's really nice to have like a place to put the dishes uh, after they've been rinsed just to kind of drip off a little bit and this is actually where we'll end up storing our clean dishes um just on our little sec segment um section we'll show you like check out our backpacking and camping playlist because you'll be able to see much better um our different times that we go camping and stuff and we'll take you on tours of our kitchens and different things like that but Sorry. Oh, there's just a bag over there. I thought there was a critter. Sorry. <laughs> um, cutting board, which I'd really like to... This is a set that we've been using for ages. And now that we have made it a priority to do more camping, I have some improvements in mind. So I'm really hoping that we'll be able to uh, share those improvements with you. But so far, this is what we've been using and it's been working. Our cutting board... This is probably been, this is my favorite skillet from in the house. It's one of those blue diamond skillets, but it heats evenly. It's easier for me to clean than my cast iron. Um, I would still like to uh, bring our cast iron, but currently, okay, so used to, whenever we would go camping, we had our minivan and we could bring everything and basically the kitchen sink also. Now we're in a Mitsubishi Mirage. That's like a hatchback clown car. <laughs> So we'll show you guys. It's a it's a snug fit. So, um, and I can feed Randy and I pretty comfortably, both of us, out of one skillet, and then maybe the pot if we need it. So that's that's nice. But it's I like having a reliable nonstick skillet. This is a collapsible bowl. Ta-da! Ta-da! I don't know for all of your collapsible bowl needs. Um. Get that back out of here. Okay, here is our bin. This is the main thing that I would really like to see some improvement on. Um, inside of said bin, we have a skunk, a stuck together clod of garlic powder, some salt, a pepper shaker, my coffee pour over my spatula knife whenever i make pancakes like it seems like this is a luxury but i use it's integral to my pancake making process um there's a little whetstone in a file for uh, i like to maintain my axes while we're or my hatchets or not let's be real uh we have a trash bag there's another spatula a whole bunch of like kebabs and a can opener and like incense and mosquito incense and more kebab stuff and some gloves for if we're doing a whole lot of processing the firewood or like brambles or something um because not all campgrounds that we go to are particularly well maintained so sometimes we do have to do a little bit of bramble clearing just to be able to not be getting like tripped and stuff by um low growing I just got hit in the head with a leaf um that scared me <laughs> um just to clear out some of the low growing stuff so we're not tripping in the dark like we we try very hard to stick to leave no trace but um sometimes we do have to clear some stuff so, uh, and again, you can, before you judge us too hard, watch our videos and see what we mean by clearing stuff. Like, we're not chopping down trees and doing, like, full-on bushcraft things. Um, but I'll be darned if I'm tripping on, like, a hair-thin, spiny vine. Like, any of y'all from Tennessee and northern Alabama, I think, will know what we're talking about. That there's these, like, hateful little vines that'll wrap around your ankles and get you. Um... <laughs> But there's some scissors and stuff in here as well. Uh, I have some ideas, mostly involving a Pringle can, actually. Uh, like, I want to mod out a Pringle can, mostly eat the Pringles. Uh, 
and to store all of our kebab sticks in because I think the Pringle can should be long enough to do that. And if not, then, well, I got to eat some Pringles. Um, and then I also have a Nalgene bottle that I would like to... That I would like to put my silverware and stuff in. That way it's not just knocking about loose in this. But again, I wanted to show you guys what our setup looks like before we make any additional improvements or modifications to it. That way we have a point of reference moving forward. So, we also... I have... Two more things of bug spray because Randy is actually allergic to mosquitoes. He swells up like crazy. Like he swells up worse from a mosquito than what I do from whenever I get stung by a bee. Like he doesn't go into like shock or anything, but it is something that we keep an eye on. Um, so preventative measures. And we typically will spray it just on our clothing and wear a lot of layers that way. But also we don't mess around with ticks. We don't mess around with mosquitoes. So some more fuel. So that's three canisters of fuel should last us. Like, if we're doing to where we can't use the campfire for cooking at all, uh, I try to budget a canister of butane a day. It's more than what we need, but I'd rather have more than what we need than not enough with, with some stuff. Like, again, I'm sure you're noticing a trend of, like, trying to be a minimalist, but I'm actually a hoarder. So, <laughs> there's that. We have some funky flames. We have fire starters, because as much as I like to play pretend at bushcraft, sometimes I just want it to be easy. Um, and some excess batteries, some more care burners, lighters, flashlights. This is my, if we have other people with us and they need a flashlight or they need an extra headlamp or something. So it's not like the best headlamp, but it'll get you to the bathroom. Um, and also our knife sharpener for the kitchen knife. Um, and some clothes pins so we try to keep that we normally try to bring like three boxes of funky flames but you know we're, we're grown-ups it's fine and so now I need to figure out I don't know anything about hatchets you guys like I'm basically ignorant just bumping into stuff um, we have the two hatchets because again Randy and I both can't process wood if we only have one hatchet. I would like to get us both like some nice axes. But I don't know what that means. I just want something that actually holds an edge. Would be kind of nice. Um, but now you can see the main reason we started using this bin is not all campgrounds have fire rings and some of the ones that do won't have a grill grate for over it and this provides multiple uses for us. It can be a spot that we can put our dishwashing station on top of, so an additional table just being elevated up out of the dirt, um, or it can be a grill grate over on this uh, campfire, or it could be something that we can set pots and pans on, because sometimes, again, if it's dark at night and you're walking around the fire, it's nice to not have somebody step in your Dutch oven or something. <laughs> so we always bring this with us, but it gets very dirty, and uh, so having a spot where we can put it and it keeps its filthiness contained, we do try to clean it, but, you know, behold. Um, so that being said, that was the basis of why we started using this container. And then it just happened to just be very nice. Um, now we come through, and this is our little single burner butane stove. That's the bottom of it. And it's unlocked, but it has a partially used canister in there. We always make sure to unlock it um, whenever it's not in use. So it has seen better days, but it gets us where we're going to hot water and food. So this is our basic big bin, you guys. And with the camera angled down here, I'm going to show you guys how we repack this in. Also, if we're in an area that we don't necessarily have to worry about bears, but you know, there's always raccoons, mice, uh, ants, different things like that. Uh, whenever we get to camp, we'll take everything out of this. And then this could be uh, a place for us to store, <sighs> just like uh, put our dry bags of food and just other things inside of. So that's a thing. Um, but yeah, so let's get this repacked.
some other items that I didn't talk about but that are going into this bin are this saw-backed machete that we got from like Academy. Um, we were going to try it out. And then this handsaw. Again, because a lot of this wood um, doesn't really hack through very well with a hatchet, but saws through fantastically. So it's a great way of hopefully processing kindling and stuff. And we'll put it in the sharp thing corner. Um, and then we've got our lights. Again, I just try to have bins to be able to put the loose stuff in. If ideally when transporting the bin never gets turned upside down or topsy-turvy or anything like that. Um, so we don't have to worry as much about, you know, everything being contained as long as it just stacks snugly in on itself. So with everything packed into the bin, um, there's still some room at the top where we can fit in additional like tarps and things that we would like to invest in and bring with us, but it's always nice to have a little bit of wiggle room and room to grow because sometimes when you're in a hurry, like packing down in the rain, stuff doesn't always get put away the same way that it got uh, packed out. So there's that. Um, if you guys have any questions, ideas, or comments, please leave them down below. I do love hearing from y'all, and um, I look forward to camping with y'all again in the future. And until then, keep on keeping on. Bye! <laughs>